Pat Summerall with John Madden at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Let's go back and review the highlight, I guess, of the first half. That was Dwight Clark's great catch on that third and seven when we all thought they were going to go for the first down. They said, nope, they just threw it to Clark in the end zone. You know, we were talking at halftime about who would start this second half for the Broncos, and it looks like it's going to be Steve DeBerg. He's warming up. Craig Morton is sitting on a table. That would indicate that uh, DeBerg is the guy who needs to get loose with it, or else it's a very comfortable table. Carlos drives Bill Ring back five yards deep into the end zone, and he downs it there. And so the 49ers will take over at their own 20. You know, the 49ers have scored more points this half than they have the entire preseason or last week. They only scored 21. I mean, they've scored 21 this half. The most they've scored is 17. You see, the one thing that still has them concerned is in the whole first half, they only had 27 yards rushing, but 211 yards passing. That's a good half. I'll say it is. There is Craig Morton over on the sideline in deep thought. First down, San Francisco. Vince Williams will open the second half, and it's Vince Williams who gets the carry and gets about five. Joe Montana, of course, the quarterback. Williams, 220-pound rookie from Oregon. Tom Jackson, by the way, made the stop. You had an interesting chat with Jackson yesterday. You thought that was interesting? <laughs> you know, well, Tom Jackson and I never did get along. For some reason, we used to have these verbal batters during games, and if they'd do something, he'd run over. And so anyway, we hadn't talked since then, but yesterday, he and his coach, Bob Zeman, came by and said hello. Pass intended for Moore off his hands. Jim Ryan was out there with him. Covered by Jim Ryan. Dan Reeves on the sideline. Montana's 18 out of 25 for 222 yards. That was his 25th attempt. And uh, just going back to what Bill Walt said yesterday, he likes to throw in an entire ball game somewhere between 25 and 28 passes. Right, and he threw 41 last week, and he's working on a 50, 50 passer today. There's Montana throwing to Dwight Clark. And once again, that combination clicks for a 49er first down. Aaron Kyle on the stop. Eric Scroggins, by the way, San Francisco linebacker, has a sprained shoulder. And the information to us is that he will not return. Boy, they've had a lot of injuries. You know, it's something about injuries. It started with the 49ers in the offseason when Randy Cross had a serious ankle injury and had to have surgery. Then it just seemed to keep building in training camp all the way preseason up until last week with Dwayne Board. Sometimes you just get the feeling that those things can become epidemic. That's one of the things that they were so fortunate with last year. Nobody got hurt. Amos Lawrence or Vince Williams this time. The ball carrier stopped by Larry Evans. You know, Bill Walsh was saying yesterday that that he would like to salvage a game. He said the team, you know, they have some problems with injuries. He said he'd like to get a game in here. He thinks that the to win the Western Division that you can afford six losses. And he said then come on strong at the end of the year. It'll be second and eight. Pretty good indication there. This is one of the few fields, football fields around that is absolutely flat. They drain it from underneath. Clark once again finds that open spot, stays on his feet, struggles out near midfield to about the 48 before Dennis Smith takes him down. You know what a great quarterback Joe Montana is? We'll see this. Randy Gratishar, number 53, he breaks free. Watch, he'll come through here. He's not even blocked. Right there, see, he's not touched. Montana was still able to get back quickly, get rid of the ball, complete it, and get a first down. Now, that's something. When you can do it, you don't even block some of those guys. Clark has seven catches for 113 yards. That one was a 14-yard pickup and a 49er first down at their own 48-yard line. First and 10. Dennis Williams gets into Bronco territory to about the 46 before Mike Harden brings him down. Of course, Mike Harden, number 31 for the Broncos, the free safety, he's starting his first game. Steve Foley was their regular. He broke his arm last week in six places and he's out for the season. 
A very, very severe break for Foley. Second and four at the 46. The 90th consecutive sellout at Mile High Stadium. Great fans. Great fans, great stadium. Boy, they support this team. That was Russ Francis in motion. Vince Williams, the ball carrier. Louis Wright up very quickly. Yeah, you talk about, excuse me. Excuse me go ahead. Now you talk about the fans and the support and everything. You know, I just get the feeling sometimes that I hope that the strike, you know, the strike thing, I hope that both sides, the players and the, and the management, take that responsibility. You know, the responsibility they have to the fans, to the vendors, to all the people that are part of this game. It's just not the players and the owners. It's not just Don, you know, I mean, it's just not the management. Con I don't mean to get carried away on this, but doggone it, there's a lot of responsibility in that deal. Well, surely, indeed, there is. Montana looking left, chased left. Throws, finds Clark finally. Rulon Jones hit Montana, and down comes the penalty flag. It'll be a roughing the passer, and of course, the rule is the referee stands behind the quarterback, and if after the quarterback releases the ball, if the ball's gone, if anyone hits him, that's a roughing penalty. And that's what happened. Big rule on Jones collided with Montana after he threw the ball. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 75, first down. That'll give the 49ers a first and 10 at the Denver 30. And once again, they're in range of full working. Williams and Moore, the two runners. This is the setup that Bill Walt said he would use more often than not. Montana appears to be calling an automatic. And does to Charlie Young. Out of bounds at the 25. Mike Harden nudged him out of bounds. I guess that was more than a nudge. A little, a little bump and nudge. You know, Rulon Jones, who just had that 15-yard penalty, is probably the best pass rusher on the Broncos team. But I'll tell you, Lindsey Mason, who's playing across, has really done a good job because we haven't heard Jones's name much other than that penalty. You're so right. We really haven't. Lindsey Mason, 6'5 and 270. Rulon Jones playing a little bit hurt. Montana retreats from his pocket. Now stands. Has a long time for Clark in the end zone. Knocked away at the last second by Aaron Kyle. Even if Clark had caught it, he would have been out of the end zone. Stops to help up Aaron Kyle, the ex-cowboy. You see that down there? They just kind of run out of grass on this field. They don't have enough room to put to put the whole field in. Watch it here. Now watch Clark. He'll look ahead. He'll take a look down. He knows that he has to stop there. He can't go anymore. And of course, the ball is too long. Let's watch the pass protection here. Now Jackson's coming from the outside. Jones goes inside. He gets help from the guard there. And then he's the other guard. They had three on him that play. Maybe that's why we haven't heard from and him. And Lindsey Mason still back there waiting to pick him up for again. The, for the second time. Hand off to Vince Williams straight ahead. He gets down near the 20. A couple of yards short of the first down, it would appear. Don Latimer made the stop. Montana looks over to Bill Walsh to see what the decision might be. They'll see how close they are. It looks like about a yard and a half. So we'll probably see Ray Wershing. I'll tell you, that was a drive, though. That took almost uh, five minutes. And that really frustrates the offense, you know, the Bronco offense. Look at Wershing. He, he won't look up. You see, he taps Montana there <laughs> that I'm here. Now watch him. He won't look up. He will not look at those goal posts. Montana gets it for him, spots him. You just look at Montana and the hash mark. And now he looks up. And the result, he wish, he would wish now he didn't see. Let's watch it here. He hadn't looked up yet. He looked up a little too soon. You know, he doesn't like to do that. That may be the problem he had. Well, could be. And now he looks back down again. He knows the grass here well. <laughs> Some days. On the sideline, 
veteran Craig Morton, quarterback, who started the contest but was replaced by Steve DeBerg, and DeBerg is now back. Morton looks on in a baseball cap. He has said this will be it for him, his last year. Not DeBerg, Morton. First and 10, Denver at their own 22. They trail 21-14. was Sammy Winder who never got underway hit by the hacksaw and cut down by the hacksaw that sign up there was saying where's hacksaw there was hacksaw Greg Morton was drafted in 1965 his 18th year in the NFL look who else was drafted that year Sayers Fredrickson Butkus Donnie Anderson guy named Namath Mike Curtis the great Colt middle linebacker and look at the years that they retired. They were all first round draft choices. They've all been retired for many years, and Craig Morton's still lining up. From the shotgun is DeBerg. And the play doesn't get underway. Fred Dean keeps coming. Chuck Heberling says, hold it a second. Now that's one thing that Heberling shouldn't have let those two guys hit DeBerg. It was a free it. shot. And it looked like they shook DeBerg up a little. I mean, if you blow the whistle and say it's no it play, it goes. I know you can't blow it, but doggone it, don't let him hit the quarterback either. The late of the game, offense, number 17. Second down. Denver's been penalized now seven times for 86 yards. Paris comes out. This is what happens here. See, it's too much time. We see DeBerg in a shotgun. Okay, now they blow the whistle. That's fine. The ball's dead. Okay, but make them stop. See, they really can't come in and hit him like that. Second down. DeBerg again out of the shotgun. Chased out of the pocket. And chased. And DeBerg tripped up just out the side of the 20 by Pete Kugler again. Hey, Pete Kugler has really made a lot of plays for this 49er defense. That was the type of thing that the ends rushed up to the outside. DeBerg had that opening up the middle. He took it. The only guy there was Pete Kugler. Play comparisons, 49ers, 16 rushes, 29 passes. The Broncos in the other direction, 19 rushes, 14 passes. San Francisco leads 21-14. Watson out wide to the left. Rick up church, split wide to the other side. Again, it's the shotgun. The bird intended for Winder, who couldn't hold on. And we will see Luke Prestridge, Tina Turner on defense. Let's watch a pass protection here. Now we see a line stunt. See, Dean's taking the inside. We see Kugler taking the outside. They pick it up nice. A lot of traffic in there, but good protection. The center, Bill Bryan, almost got into Berg's way. Deep for the 49ers, Bill Ring and Dwight Hicks. Prestridge. Averaging 48 and a half yards per punt. They do like to kick here. And again, watch the double team down the bottom. Another good kick by Prescott. Right kicks at his own 27. Looking for some place to go. No penalty marker down. But the coverage, nevertheless, is very good. They thought that Lytle was kicked. Woodard is the man down who makes the tackle. And again, a fine punt by Prescott. This time, 52 yards. With 8.03 left in the third quarter, it's San Francisco 21, Denver still 14. Stadium in Denver. The lights are on here. They really don't need to be, but they are. Just in case this game lasts in this half as long as it did in the first half. Vince Williams, Jeff Moore, the two runners. This is Moore for the 49ers. Nothing doing. It's Randy Gratishar from behind. That was a great play by Gratishar, Patty. Instead of lining up at the linebacker position, Gratishar went up and lined up in a three-point stance right over the guard. And boom, as soon as the ball was snapped, he hit that hole into the backfield and made the tackle from behind. That guy, he'll lead the Broncos every year in tackle, and he'll, well, there's seven years, that's right, and he'll usually lead the league in tackle. And he's well on his way. You saw he led it, led them for seven years. It appears he'll do it again. He's made an awful lot of tackles today. Second down. 
nine at the 31 for San Francisco. Solomon started in motion. Montana back to pass, hit by Rulon Jones. Solomon has it. Hit by Mike Harden and taken out of bounds. Montana under heavy pressure from Rulon Jones. Still got it away, and Solomon got a clutch first down. 29-yard pickup. That was a great pass rush, and you wonder how a quarterback can throw the ball. I mean, you talk about respect for a position. Quarterbacks are not overpaid. Now, watch what Joe Montana has to do here. He play fakes here. He's looking. Here comes Boyd straight at him, another guy from behind. They put him in in a vice, and he still completes that ball to Freddie Solomon. Now, that is a football play. And an athlete. Like to have him playing for your team. On first down, Moore gets the carry. Moore bangs ahead for good yardage. Down to about the 34 before Barney Chavis makes the stop with Gradishar again. You know, that's the type of play that has the defense talking to themselves and saying, what do we have to do? We break free on the rush. We have two guys, we get there, and he still gets it off for a long completion. The talented Russ Francis is in the contest for the 49ers. And he will be the tight end on the left side. Ronaldo Nehemiah comes out to the right. Here comes Francis in motion. Hand off, Williams spins for a couple. Short of a first, first down by one, perhaps, maybe one and a half. I think that's one of the things we're going to th uh, see in pro football more and more is the two tight end and the motion. Because when a tight end moves, that changes the strength of the formation. The strength of the formation is always based on where the tight end is. So they say, strong right, strong right. Then he goes left. Now it's strong left, strong left. And we're seeing more and more of that. Do you think that's perhaps in some way because of the three-man front? This is short yardage. That's different. I'll ask in a minute. Here's Montana rolling right, looking right. Montana does not get the first down. Had nobody to throw to. Rulon Jones, number 75, the first man in orange to arrive on the scene. This will be an interesting call here. It should be a, uh, a field goal attempt. Yeah, it is a field goal attempt. I thought maybe the 49ers were going to go for it. I think that last play, uh, Pat, was a run all the way. The two tight ends who went downfield both went down and threw blocks. Montana will hold for the man who doesn't look. Ray Orshin. This will be from 50 yards out. He can get it there. It's deflected, and it will not be good. Dennis Smith got a hand on it. Number 49 for the Broncos. Ooh. This one they bring, of course, back to the line of scrimmage. So the Broncos will take over at their own 33. Let's watch that deflection here by Dennis Smith. You know, he was a seven foot high jumper. Watch him get up in the air. Watch, he starts from back here. Watch him run, leap, get his left hand up right there and get the ball. Valuable guy, that Dennis Smith. He was their number one draft choice a year ago. And again, he was in the same secondary at USC with Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott, and he played side by side as safeties. Egloff moves around. Winder is the deep setback. Now he moves to the left. Keeper is still the quarterback. And Steve will throw on first down. Does. Well, throws low. Intended for Watson. Watson is playing with a very sore shoulder. Got extra padding. He's a tough guy. He is a tough guy. You know, and he didn't, uh, I think he only caught one or two passes last week. We really haven't heard his name uh, this week. And, uh, look what he did last year. He led the AFC in pass receiving. Now watch Ronnie Lott. This is an aggressive guy. Watch. The ball's there. It's too low. Ronnie Lott's still trying to find the ball. He doesn't have it. He's <laughs> Anxious. And the 49ers on a blitz. DeBerg gets it across to Upchurch. Upchurch is surrounded by white shirts very quickly. Nothing doing. Milk McCall. And Lawrence Pillars quickly converge on Upchurch. He did a lot of dancing, but not much progressing. Lawrence Pillars looked like he may get and knocked a little goofy there. Jack Reynolds is pointing to the sideline. 
Look at that score. Detroit 16 to nothing over the Rams. Miami beating Baltimore, but not by much. 24-20. Don Shula's team scoring a lot of points. And doing a lot of funny things. Seattle and Houston, one of them has to win. Third and six. Riley Odoms goes in motion. Deferred from the shotgun. Penalty marker down. Pass is caught by Will Height. And he is caught and caught by Carlton Williamson. I think that's what, you know, the Broncos in the second half really haven't gotten started yet. They no. haven't gotten their offense going. And maybe they needed a play like that. Of course, the penalties against them, and that's the greatest drive stopper in the world. Not only the loss of yardage, it's a change in situation and a change in outlook. Well, you take that play instead of being at midfield. Now illegal the motion, 30. offense, number 88. Ryan the Odoms illegally in motion. San Francisco's been penalized four times for 25 yards. Denver, eight times, 91 yards. Dan Reeves. Not too happy. The ex-Dallas Cowboy roommates. Dan Reeves, Craig Morton, third and 11. DeBerg out of the shotgun. DeBerg throws behind his intended receiver, Wade Manning. Watch Manning here now. It's a zone. You see, and he starts here. Now he gets by. Now he can come inside. He should have worked up field a little more. He's waiting for where the ball to be led in front of him. And it was thrown behind him. San Francisco defender was Dana McLemore, and we'll look at Luke Prestridge again. Bill Ring and Wright Hicks back deep for the 49ers. Prestridge averaging almost 50 yards a kick. Low snap, he feels it okay, gets off another rocket. Chases Hicks all the way back to the 13-yard line. Right Hicks chased by the Broncos, and they're down in good shape. He doesn't get back to the 20. Woodard again, the first man down. Boy, he's done a good job on special teams. 56-yard punt that time by Luke Prestridge. An eight-yard return. San Francisco by seven. Toyota presents a truck that gives you the feeling. The feeling that you finally found a truck hungry for work. The Toyota Diesel, with a dual battery system for sure starts, with a true diesel engine, not a converted gasoline engine. Yeah, it's hungry for work, but it's not thirsty for fuel. Now you got the feeling. Somebody did it right. Owens Corning Fiberglass announces a $10 rebate on pink insulation. And none too soon because old man winter is coming with all those high fuel bills. Don't take it. Roll out an extra fuel saving layer of pink insulation in your attic and get $10 back from Owens Corning too. But hurry, the put your house in the pink rebate ends September 26th. San Francisco 21, Denver 14. We're in the third quarter with 4.02 remaining. 49ers still have Joe Montana at quarterback. Russ Francis tight end to the right. Right part tight to the left. Draw play to Moore. Good yardage. First down, San Francisco. Outside the 30 to about the 33. Tom Jackson tripped him up. You know, last year when the 49ers had the, the best record in the NFL, the thing that they did well is they would start off passing and they would they would pass establish the pass and then run most teams used to always try and establish the run and then go to the pass. I remember Bill Walsh saying an injured 49er that's Jeff Moore that once he got ahead and once he got into the third quarter that he started playing that clock just doing what you were talking about. Let's see if we can see what happened. You know what happened here. I think Jeff Moore. You see where the ball was? He just landed on the ball. And that hurts. That gets right up there in those ribs in the back, and that's exactly what it is. It's just the right size to get into that cavity. Just watch it there. You see the ball in his left hand? Now watch as he goes down. He falls right on the ball. You see the ball's right underneath him? And it looks like he got his side, the ribs, and maybe the hip. 
Next week's schedule, once again, John and I will be in Pittsburgh. When the Giants go there to play the Steelers, strike or no strike, you'll see the NFL today before the game start. The Cowboys will be in Minnesota. Both teams one and one. Rams in trouble. Entertain Philadelphia. Or Philadelphia entertains the Rams, rather. St. Louis against Washington. Surprising Redskins. And the Bears in San Francisco. And the Giants, of course, have played the Steelers very well over the years. Here's Montana to Vince Williams. Nothing doing. Bill Ring, by the way, replaced Jeff Moore. Rulon Jones on the tackle for Vince Williams. Second and ten it will be at the 34-yard line for San Francisco. No gain on that last play by Williams. Ring and Williams, the two runners. Rulon Jones on the last tackle. 3.02 left in the third quarter. Solomon wide to the right. Ring split out to the left. Park is a tight end on the left. Pass to Ring as he came in motion. And the tough one gets out close to midfield. Out to the 49. First down. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Now the two things that have plagued Tampa Bay through the years, a woeful kicking game and their inability to come from behind. Moments ago, James Wilder battled his way seven yards for a touchdown. They now trail the Redskins 18-13 in the second half. Heat's on Doug Williams again. Back to you in Denver. Thank you very much, Brent. Ronaldo Nehemiah split out wide to the right. He's the lone split man. This is Bill Ring, and he's hit right in the backfield by Don Latimer before he ever got back to the line of scrimmage. It takes a good nose tackle, John, to play the 3-4 defense. The Broncos have two good ones. And it usually, the way they block them today, now the center blocks them, the guards block them, the tight ends block them, guys flying in on helicopters block them. <laughs> it takes at least two, and as you say, with Reuben Carter, who starts, and Don Latimer, both from the University of Miami, they have two of the best. Second down, no gain on the last play. Latimer shut it down. Montana, play pass fake. Trying to set up a screen to ring. Throws wide, out of bounds. Over the head of Freddie Solomon, covered by Lewis Wright. I'm sure he threw that one away. He did. Again, he had good pass protection, but it was good coverage by the Bron Broncos secondary. He had no one to throw to. Throw to so he just threw it away. Brulon Jones was applying the heat. Montana now 23 out of 32, 292 yards, two touchdowns. You see, he was explaining to his guys. He was going like this. I had to throw it away. I didn't have anything. That makes the linemen feel good. You know, they know incomplete pass, but it wasn't their fault. Makes them block better on the next play. It's third down 10. Crowd comes to life. Mile High Stadium. Montana trying to call an audible. At the line of scrimmage, he has Clark and Solomon both to the right. He'll look in that direction. Looking incomplete. Ball might have slipped out of his hands just a bit. Let's watch how they contain Don Latimer. Let's watch what happens in the middle. The center there, Fred Quillen. You see, he starts on him. Randy Cross, the right guard, comes. He gets a little piece of him. He gets his back. They just double team him at least on every play. Look at him. He said, Where'd you come from, man? I thought you were the center. Miller will punt from his own 35. Be handled by Wilhite. Skips down, gets up. Gets out to about the 24 yard line. 39 yard punt, 11 yard return. Injured 49er is Randy Cross. Boy, he's had a series of injuries. Hey, he's the center on the punt coverage, and he's one of the good ones. Of course, he's one of the good players. He had that ankle injury in the offseason. He pulled a hamstring last week in practice, and this one doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. His leg was all discolored yesterday where he pulled that hamstring. It's still San Francisco 21, Denver 14. You can't disguise the quality of this car. It could be a BMW, but it isn't. It's thousands of dollars left. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Number 51, of course, is Randy Cross, and he is now being helped over to the sideline. 
I didn't really see what happened to him, John. Did you? Well, it looked like he started off. He snapped the ball. He was the center on the punt coverage. He started running downfield, and you could see someone was coming to peel on him from the blind side. I didn't see the contact. It's been an injury troubled year for Randy Cross. Denver's ball, their own 24. Sammy Winder straight ahead by Fred Dean. Right now, for an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat, the Rams get on the board here. One yard by Mike Gooman. How is Vince Ferragamo doing? Well, not all that well. Two of seven for 47 yards. The Rams still have a long ways to go in this game. Back to you in Denver. And here in Denver, they're still paying attention and consulting with Randy Cross over on the 49er sideline. 49er doctors administering to him. Watson was in motion. Here's DeBerg. Dean chasing. Pass complete to Watson. Steve Watson's first catch of the day. Stopped by Carlton Williamson. DeBerg just barely got it away. 15-yard gain. I think he did. And the fans sure like that one because Watson is a very popular player on this team. It's his first pass today, and maybe we'll see them going more and more to Watson. Look, he's the second guy, the deep guy right there. That wasn't a great pass. Had he led him a little more, Watson may have been able to take that another 15 or 20 yards. He was the Broncos' MVP last year on offense. They may not finish this play before the end of the third quarter, and they don't. So at the end of the three, at Mile High Stadium, it's the San Francisco 49ers 21, Denver 14. We'll return to Mile High Stadium after this word from your local station. Introducing the 1982. Nations nationwide and by all state for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with all state. We'll start the fourth quarter. 15 minutes at least more of football. 49ers leading 21-14. Over the Denver Broncos at Mile High Stadium. Watson in motion. Deberg fakes. Going deep for Upchurch. Penalty markers all over the place. Lynn Thomas back there with Upchurch. It doesn't do any good to argue, Pat. I don't think that was Dwight Hicks is doing, but we see here Upchurch has a step on Thomas there. The ball is thrown a little short. See Thomas get his hand there? It was a left hand while the ball was in the air. I'll tell you, that was great camera work there, getting that hand right on the ball. They, they don't miss a thing, these people. You mean the camera people? Camera people. You know, we have a lady camera person today. Pass interference, defense, number 28. No First argument down. about that one, a 49-yard penalty. Now listen to the crowd come to life. What's it doing? <laughs> There's the camera lady. Hi, lady. First and goal from the six for the Denver Broncos. Egloff lines up to the right. Winder fights his way to about the two-yard line. Bob Horn made the stop. This is where it counts. You know, this is where you need offensive linemen. Down here, down towards the goal line, in the trenches. Get that linebacker. Lock that corner out. Get those guys that are down low so that you can pick up that yardage. This is where offensive linemen score touchdowns. Just outside the two, second and goal. Denver trying to tie it up. Remember the Super Bowl. Great goal line stand by the 49ers is what John Madden's referring to. Deferred throw. Knocked down. Great defensive play. Intended for Jimmy Wright. Knocked down by Ed Judy. Let's watch this. He thinks 
He wants a 49er defense to anchor in there. We see DeBerg. He's watching the slant all the way. He throws it in there, and Judy makes a good play of getting his hand on it. And you see the linebacker, Judy, coming in. You see he's right there. He was man for man down on the goal line. Oh, that's a good play. Denver is 0 for 5. As far as third down conversions are concerned, third and goal at the 2. Winder. He wanted to get in. He got to about the 1. He didn't get many yards, but that's a good run. That was a heck of a run, and it brings up a big decision for Dan Reed. You're seven points down. You have 13 minutes to go. Do you go for it? It looks like they're going to. Watch Jack Reynolds here. He's coming out. The linebackers, everyone's flowing. Good cutback by Winder. Good effort by the rookie. And the Broncos are going for it on fourth down. Ball just inside the one. And they are going. Long time in the huddle. There's where it is. Fred Dean also in the contest. DeBerg asking for quiet. Odoms moves out wide to the right. 49ers shuffling around on defense. Egloff in motion. DeBerg comes out, throws, and throws over the head of Egloff. Tina Turner out with Egloff. A wide, high throw by DeBerg. I'll tell you, that was something. They had a shift, then they had motion. We see Egloff. DeBerg just leans it out there, and it's a little too high, even if it weren't good, good coverage. Tina Turner was the defender out with Ron Egloff, and so the score remains. San Francisco 21, Denver 14. Those are things on which you have to capitalize. It's like the 49ers have been huddling in their own end zone a lot of times today. They still lead. They've been in the other end zone three times. And off to Williams. He gets a little bit of breathing room out to about the five. Once again, it's number 53 who makes the stop for the Broncos' Randy Gratishar. Montana has thrown it 33 times, thrown for two touchdowns, one to Solomon, one to Clark, completed 23. The Denver quarterbacks, Morton and DeBerg, 12 of 21 for 137. I think the 49ers would like to run and get some first downs now. Second and six from the five. Get some first downs and take some time off the clock. Nothing doing here. This is Don Latimer, first to make contact. Washington 21, Tampa Bay 13 now, fourth quarter. Down in Tampa in a driving rainstorm. Monsoon. That's a driving rainstorm. <laughs> I wonder if it's still monsooning down there. It can. It's a big play, third down here. You know, if the Broncos can stop them on this down, they'll get good uh, field position on a punt return and get another shot at a score. Montana pitches back to Williams. They will not get the first down. Gratishar, once again, one of the first ones there, along with Mike Harden. Let's watch that play develop. They, these linebackers are very tough to run on. Now watch the pursuit. The linebacker's coming down. Watch Gratishar. He's taken on the block there, plays off. He's in position. If he goes outside, he's in position for a cutback, and Latimer catches him from behind. So Miller out of his own end zone. Will Height back deep for Denver. Great punt by Miller. Chases Will Height all the way back to his own 36. Will Height cutting up field. Got some room. Will Height back in. San Francisco territory to the 41. Williams made the stop. Will Hyde is shaken up. 54 yard kick. Watch his return. He starts up the middle, takes it a little to the left, and then right up the middle, and watch the hits that he takes here at the end. Next Sunday at the end. 11 minutes and 10 seconds left to play at Mile High Stadium. 21-14. There's Gerald Wilhite, who seems to be okay, just got the wind knocked out of him. This is the best field position Denver has had all day in which to start a drive. 
They sent Odoms in motion. The bird throws quickly out to Odom. And he is taken down very quickly by Keena Turner. Good coverage again by the linebacker. All those passes are bad and good for the average. When you throw a pass completion and only gain two yards, you can run a quarterback sneak and get that far. I would expect, again, that they're going to start working to their left, the Broncos I'm talking about, against Lynn Thomas right there, number 28. He's probably thinking the same thing that they've tried it before. I'm ready. Here you come. And Bill Walsh looking on. Detroit 19, the Rams 7. That's in the fourth quarter. As we are in the fourth quarter with 10-28 left to play. Watson goes in motion. DeBerg, 49ers blitz. DeBerg gets it out to Upchurch. Upchurch finds no place to go as Ronnie Lott slings him to the ground. Uh, Ronnie you know, Lott's just a tough guy. Right, he is, and he's all over the field making tackles. He makes tackles when they catch the ball. He makes tackles in the backfield when they run the ball. He's all over. Now, that, that wasn't DeBerg's fault. You know, he had to take that short one because the coverage of the 49ers was excellent. There was nothing open deep, and he had to come underneath. He just looks strong. Do you see him in that T-shirt yesterday and those muscles he has? What do you call those things that grow up from your shoulder to your neck? Deltoids? He had big one. The bird back. The bird with good time going deep for up church. He has up church for a touchdown. Dana McLemore was the defender. But the Broncos pull to within one. See if one watches the 49ers are in their sub defense. They have six defensive backs. Brickley, Ricky Dana McLemore, he'll end up right here at the end. He'll end up on Rick Upchurch. And we'll see Upchurch has him by two or three steps. Great throw, great throw, right over the top, and a fine catch. And That's there was a personal foul call on McLemore on the after defense. the catch. We will enforce it on the kickoff. It's a touchdown. Touchdown, Broncos. They'll kick off from the midfield, the 50-yard line. Rick Upchurch has had a big day today. You know, last week he had a, a few drops, and some fans were down on him, some people here, but he's made up for it today. Punt returning, catching deep balls, everything. DeBerg, who just threw the touchdown pass, will hold for Carlos. That was a good throw from DeBerg as well. Carlos gets it up and through. And we have a tie football game at 21 all. Crowd going wild. 9-29 left to play. It is 21-21. San Francisco and Denver. You feel this place rock when they get excited. Can't you feel it? You can feel it. Yeah. I think you can feel the... Stadium is a mile high. The They're Broncos, rocking this stadium. They really are. And part of it floats. I'm worried about that part. That's the part on the other side, though. Yes. They kick off from midfield because there was a personal file foul after the touchdown catch. Knuckle. Into the hands of a linebacker, number 54 for the 49 is run 49er Ron Ferrari. And let's
let's go back and get a lesson from John Madden. Well, you know, we can see that they have the six defensive backs in here. They start a little motion. Now we're going to get a corner pattern down here by Upchurch. McLemore is man to man, and at this point he gets beat. Let's see if we can watch it. I see the motion starts inside. Upchurch is still the outside guy. Works to the inside and then back to the corner. By the time we get back to it, watch this. He has the three steps and the touchdown. He keeps going out of the end zone, hits him, and that's that was the penalty. That's why they kicked off in the 50 as Montana goes right to work. Pass complete to Charlie Young, still on his feet. And that'll quiet the crowd down very quickly. Mike Harden made the tackle, but Young is out near midfield. Here we watch Charlie Young on an ISO. He's going to run. See, it's against his zone. You see the linebacker chasing him there. He hits it inside of one linebacker, over a line, another linebacker, and the weak safety finally gets over to tackle him, Mike Harden. First down, 49ers at their own 49. 21-21 the score. Montana out calmly and coolly. Francis in motion. Williams tries to find some place to go. Cannot. Barney Chavis there very quickly. Right now for an update, let's go to Brent Busberger in New York. As they have tied the 49ers at 21. Second down 10. Williams gets the carry. Williams gets about eight. Mike Harden made the stop. Vince Williams. Good yardage. Let's watch this. It's a draw play. See, the 49ers pass so much. If they go back, they make it look like a pass. They stand up in pass protection, get the Denver guys to rush, and then hand off on a delay or draw play to Vince Williams. Third and two at the Denver 43. This is a passing down for the 49ers. This is not a run down. They have two tight ends. They have Russ Francis on the left, Charlie Young on the right. Williams struggling, doesn't get it. Does not get it. Rulon Jones, the first man there. As I said, it's a running down for the 49ers anytime they're third and two. Uh, but usually in that situation, they do pass, and that's going to be short. Bring up fourth down. That's a tough thing here. You probably should punt. Make the Broncos go the distance because. If you don't get the first down, they're going to have good field position. With a score tied, I would be surprised if the 49ers do go for it, but they are going for it, and I am surprised. And Bill Ring has come in in place of Jeff Moore. And Ring is, of course, the good first down man. 215 pounds, tough to get down. Two tight ends once again. Montana calls it. They need about a foot. Handoff is to Williams, and he got it. Randy Gratishar made the stop, but Williams went over the top and got it. Watch Gratishar on this play. Look, he's lined up here. He's number 53. He's about five yards deep. He sees that thing, and he dives the same time Williams did, but Williams beat him on that one. That was a gutsy, gutsy call by the 49ers, and a great play by Vince Williams. It looks like the ball almost Whoa. came out of there. It did. While he was in the air, he I lost know. control and got it back. First down, 49ers at the Denver 40. Score tied 21-21. Solomon in motion. Montana will now put it up. Being chased, chased quickly by Reuben Carter. Penalty marker down. Pass complete. But they'll bring it all back. Jeff Moore is the man who made the reception against San Francisco. I'll tell you, that was deep in the backfield. I'm sure it was Keith Fawnhorse. He was right back there by Montana, and the referee threw it right at him. Chuck Heberling will let us know who it was. Maybe we can let him know. Number 71. <laughs> Maybe so. It's the only time some of those offensive linemen get mentioned. When they hold, you mean? Offense number 71, first down. It was holding and it was number 71. They don't miss a thing as officials, huh? Very good. 
First down, 49ers. They need 20 now for a first. They're exactly at midfield. Kings Williams alone set back. Here is Montana. Pressured. Gets Clark. Finds Clark. Gets about eight. And Dwight Clark is knocked back by Tom Jackson and Randy Gratishar. Montana checking over on the sideline. Quiet crowd quiets down just a little bit. Those of you who watch the Washington Redskins win their second in a row, 21-13 this time over Tampa Bay, welcome to Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the score is the Denver Broncos 21, the 49ers 21. Pat Summerall with John Madden. We have five and a half minutes left to play in the football game. Second down, 15, the 49ers at the Denver 45. Montana throws, finds Clark once again. Short of a first down, but nevertheless, they continue to move closer. That's a way to do it. You know, they had the penalty. They were first and 20. Now, you don't have to get to 20 yards. You get about 10 of it, then you get about six or seven more, and now he ends up in a good, uh, in a good situation, still a pass, but third and about six or seven. Clark has caught nine passes for 127 yards. This is Joe Montana's best passing day ever. He's got 336 yards. His best before was 304, third and six. Montana puts Clark in motion and drops, looking, chased, gets rid of it. Pass is picked off. Dennis Smith comes up with the interception. Still on his feet is Dennis Smith. He's got one blocker in front. Smith cuts back, stopped by Montana. The Broncos have the ball at the San Francisco 45. Here we watch Dwight Clark here. He's coming in motion. He starts back to the inside. Now watch, Smith is man for man. He sees the ball from him, gets a great break, a great jump in the ball. Caught it with one hand, his left hand, makes a fine move. Now watch. The only guy here is Joe Montana. He has to make the tackle with his left leg. And the crowd goes wild. 21-21. For nearly seven starts with 60 minutes, followed by the special preview of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and it's Alice, followed by Trapper John MD, all tonight on CBS. There's a lot still going on on CBS right now at Mile High Stadium. 21-21 San Francisco and Denver. Broncos have the ball. Winder. Winds it to the outside for about a yard and a half. That was that tight end trap. You know, the tight end Egloff again came in motion. Let's see if we can watch it, how they how they blocked him. Now watch 85. He comes across like he's going in motion. Stops. Traps. Traps right there on the nose tackle. Hardy. And then they run inside. Good defense by the linebackers there. Got only a yard. So it'll be second down and nine from the 43-yard line. Three minutes, 46 seconds now left to play. Both teams have all their timeouts remaining. Will Height back in the contest. Good to see that. Here comes up Church in motion. Pitch back to Paris. Paris looking for some running room. Gets down to the 39. Now comes the big play. This is a big play. It looks like the Broncos are trying to do two things here, Pat, is one, run some time off the clock, and two, get in field position for this guy here, warming up on the sideline, Rich Carlos. You know, there's a lot of new kickers in the NFL this year. You notice none of them look like their jerseys fit. And they all look like they're about 15. <laughs> Third down and five. The Berg will go from the shotgun this time. Good snap. Pass is knocked down. Penalty marker goes down. It's intended for Preston. It's going to be called against Tina Turner. I'll tell you, we've had a lot of pass interference in this game, and they've been big, big plays and big, big downs. Tina Turner looks like he might believe it. interference defense number 58 first down first down Broncos they got their first down not the way they had planned but we'll take it 
so I'm sure they're safe. Let's see if we can see Keener Turner here. It'll be right at the end, just as a, it looked like maybe he was on his shoulder before the ball got there. Up, Church out wide to the right. Watson split to the left, and now he comes in motion. And that goes back in the other direction. The Berg gets to Winder to the 30. Now the Broncos know that they're in field goal position. The score is tied. Two minutes, 35 seconds left to go. Now what they want to do is keep that position. They don't want to do anything to have a turnover, but they would also like to get first downs and maybe score. This would be 47 yards for Carlos if they tried to kick it right here. I'm not sure how strong he is. I'm not sure he can get it that far. They'd like to get closer. Watson goes in motion. Handoff. Paris to the 30. No more. Jack Reynolds made the hit that knocked him down. They're going to keep that ball on the ground and just, uh, you know, try and take time off the clock. And it looks like someone thinks that they are. Two minutes remaining now. And so the clock will stop at that point. 21 21 tie. Chevrolet's gigantic factory authorized year end clearance ends this Wednesday. Don't miss your chance to save up to $900 on Cavaliers, $700 on. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Mile High Stadium in Denver. That's the score, 21 apiece. The Broncos are at the San Francisco 30 yard line. Two minutes remaining to play. It's third down. They need seven for a first. Looks like they're going to go to a passing formation. They may go to a shotgun. In fact, they are going to a shotgun here. So the Broncos are thinking pass and get a first down. The bird throws. Watson has it. And it is a first down. Lynn Thomas on the coverage, but what a clutch throw and catch by DeBerg and Watson. We'll see Watson on the outside. DeBerg is getting a, a push here. You see he's getting a press, but he had enough movement in the inside to be able to get the ball out to Watson. Defending was Lynn Thomas. Let's watch the rush here. See, we got everyone in there. Now watch this. Good pass protection. They get Dean to the outside. Now see, DeBerg can step up. But boy, after he stepped up, he sure paid for that one. But I'm sure he's the happiest person in the stadium right now. They're inside the 20. Winder gets down inside the 15. They get Carlos a little bit closer. Keena Turner on the tackle. Clock runs, continues to run. San Francisco and Denver both had all their timeouts remaining. San Francisco just took one. So they San have Francisco, have. number one. Yeah, San Francisco has to take their timeouts now because if they don't, they wouldn't have any time when and if they get the ball back. Again, regardless of whether there is a strike, which is supposed to take place Tuesday morning, if indeed it does, next Sunday, the NFL will be on. The NFL today will be on regardless. John Madden and I will be in Pittsburgh for the Giants' visit. To Three Rivers Stadium against the Steelers, who are now 2-0. Dallas will be up in Minnesota. Cowboys beat St. Louis today. Minnesota, of course, is one and one. Rams at Philadelphia, St. Louis at Washington, and the Chicago Bears at San Francisco. Here at Mile High Stadium in Denver, no one has left. I mean, no one. But <laughs> I'm sure they won't. Until about an hour after the game's over. That's the type of, that's the type of crowd this is. Following football tonight on CBS, 60 minutes, seven brides for seven brothers. That sounds like a good match. Alice and Trapper John MD. That, of course, will be at normal times on the West Coast. And as soon as football is over in the East, San Francisco has two timeouts remaining. Paris and Winder, the runners. Egloff sets up on the right side and goes back in motion. There's that trap play again. Winder down near the 10. I mean, the 49ers are taking their second time out, Pat, because <clears throat> they know that they have to get the ball back. It would seem that perhaps they have conceded the field goal. 
Final today, New Orleans 10, Chicago nothing. I'd like to welcome those of you to Mile High Stadium. The game you've been seeing, been watching is over. Here it's not over. It is Denver 21, San Francisco 21. We have a minute and a half left to play, a minute 36 more exactly. The Broncos are at the 49er 11, of course, within field goal range. A minute 36 left to play. Bill Walsh in conversation with Joe Montana. Those people are the ones I'd like to particularly welcome. Detroit beat the Los Angeles Rams 19 to 14. Rams should stay out of the NFC Central Division, I guess. <laughs> we saw Bill Walsh talking over there to Joe Montana, minute 36, and he knows that they're going to get the ball back, and they're talking about what they're going to do when they get it back. Ninth play coming up at this drive, which started after the interception on the San Francisco 44. Two tight ends once again. Riley Odom's on the left. Egloff in motion. The bird looking has a man wide open who falls down. Rick Paris could have scored, I'm certain, if he had been able to maintain his balance. You know, it was still a big play because it gives the Broncos a first down. And now they can take more and more time. But watch this. It's a good catch. I mean, <clears throat> he gets up in the air, but as he comes down, he doesn't get control of his feet. And there's no defender there yet. DeBerg, 14 out of 22 as they finally do arrive on the scene and put him down. They might be better off right here to go ahead and let him score quickly. Egloff once again in motion. Paris. And Egloff must have been indeed in motion. Penalty marker down in the end zone. Maybe somebody was offside. Jack Reynolds on the stop. I think it's against the 49ers, Pat. We have 12 men on the defense. That usually is a successful defense down there in the goal line, but when you have 12 of them, of course they have someone counting them. Let's here here we can count them right here. Look, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Where's the twelfth guy? Must be the official. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's the invisible man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I only see eleven. <laughs> Did you see twelve? No, I didn't. I like the way you count. Play. There was 12 men on the field. There was only 11. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Boy, I was worried about that. I mean, we have the thing. We count them. We mark them. Oh, very good. We guy. do everything. Yeah, I wonder if they saw that. I wonder if they have a monitor down the sideline and they saw that. No, they object to that. Did they listen, though? They could listen. I'm glad you counted them twice. <laughs> so am I. There's the 12th man on the right end of the ball, Pete Rozelle. Now they turn him around. Second down. This is Rob Lytle. Very near to the goal line. 49ers in deep trouble. The 49ers, it looks like they're doing it. They have to keep them down here and then hope that they can block. If they can stop them, then they still have to, to block that uh, field goal attempt. Third down, one yard. Third and one. Rob Lytle and Will Hite, the runners. They give it to Lytle, I'm sure they do. Lytle does not get in. And now the Broncos are signaling from the sideline to take a timeout, and they do with three seconds to go. It looked like they were going, but they didn't know that with a score tied. They better take time out because when they don't score, now watch this goal line defense down here. Good penetration by the 49ers. Nothing there for Lytle. The pile doesn't go into the end zone. The pile goes back. So it's not a touchdown. Wouldn't that have been something had they not taken the time out there? 
Watch Jack Reynolds. All that action here. He gets in there pushing from behind. Good action. Good shot. Again, Pete Kugler was the first guy there. He's had a big day on he defense. He really has. But all boils down to this. What about quarterbacks, linemen, backs, ends, defense? Walls down to a guy named Rich Carlos. A barefooted kicker. Looking up at that south end zone, which we have identified considerably today. Three seconds left to play. It'll be from 20 yards out. DeBerg will hold. No, from 17 yards out. Carlos hits it. It's over. Denver, 24. San Francisco, 21. 17-yard field goal by Carlos. The margin of victory. So long from John Madden and Pat Summerall. 24-21, Denver over the 49ers. Right now, let's go to Brent Bursberger in New York.